Hello everyone, just a very short note. The programming and production staffs are going to be on professional and spiritual retreat for the next couple of weeks here at churchmilton.tv. And so we're going to be representing to you some of the more well-received Vortex episodes from the past year or so. God love you and please keep us in your prayers. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Why is it that beauty speaks to the heart in so elegant a fashion that even the most coarse of cultures virtually seize up and are enraptured by it? Beauty is always appealing. There are only a few Catholic teachings more foundational than this. Beauty captivates, it sweeps us away, changes lives in an instant. Why? because it is a reflection of the divine, the interior life of God. This is one of the hallmarks, one of the great markers of the Catholic faith, of Catholic identity. It's why so many, many, many people through the ages have been motivated to explore the church even more because they were entranced by her beauty, love at first sight, you might say. A note we have been playing over the past few days here on the Vortex has been how throwing off the hallmarks of Catholic identity has inflicted so much damage to the church. From her art, to her architecture, to her sacred music, these things all speak to the soul and to abandon them in favor of pop culture and the latest fad or trend, which is gone in a few weeks, is an abomination. The church doesn't need to conform to pop culture. Pop culture needs to have a mirror held up to it and show it how ugly it is in the face of real, authentic beauty. And that is the best way to show the culture how far from grace it has actually fallen. Show it truth and goodness and beauty, and you will evoke a response in the soul because the soul has been created for these things. When beauty and the beast meet, it is the beast who is changed, not beauty. A clear demonstration of beauty meeting the beast came a short while ago on the popular TV show, America's Got Talent. Take note of this short clip. Paige, and I'm from New York. Nice. Um, what's the name of your group? We're a singing group, and the name of our group is Forte. Forte? Yeah. Forte. How long have you been together for? We actually, we met online, and, and uh, this is our first time singing for an audience, ever. Yeah, and so absolutely. you've never met each other before until when? In person? Until a few days ago, before this audition. Yeah, in person. No way. So how long ago did you meet online? How long have you been rehearsing? Uh, a few weeks ago, and then we just kind of put it all together basically a couple days ago. Is this like Match.Sing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a million dollars in Radio City Music Hall. Show us what hey. you got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It looks like a joke.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Surprise! <laughs> Imagine a packed pop culture house cheering the beautiful singing of one of the most cherished Catholic hymns of all time. It's a safe bet almost no one in that crowd knew what was actually being sung to them in Latin, but that's beside the point. Sure, they cheered the awesome voices, but those awesome voices were belting out Catholic beauty. The souls of the audience had a primal recognition of beauty, a uh, hearkening back perhaps, a remembering back to the time before the fall when we lived in beauty, which is how we are all able to recognize it now. We know it when we hear it. This is what the Catholic Church can give the pop culture. Even Howard Stern sitting there, blown away in the face of authentic beauty. It was the true, the good, and the beautiful expressed by the church that converted an empire. We can't cast these things aside. They are our weapons in the spiritual combat we now find ourselves in. The piece the fellows sang is called Pie Jesu, and it was born from the heart of the Catholic Church. If you'd like to know the words, we've attached a link. God bless Holy Mother Church, and God love you. I'm Michael Voris.